Welcome to this Human Talk review. Human Talk is a software by Paul Potter and Sid Dewar, two very good marketers who have released a lot of different products in the past, mainly video products, but this one's a little different. So we can see the sales page here and it talks mainly about generative AI with emotions. That's the text to speech side of things, which is really good. Now this channel is mainly talking about a different kind of content writing software. Although AI as a whole is used throughout this app, for you guys who are into content writing, wait until we get to the text writer side of things because there's one specific feature which isn't really mentioned on this sales page, which I think you're going to really like. So to start with, let's talk about the price because that will make a difference to a lot of people. The price does seem very high. Uh, it is $297 as a one-time price or $69 as a five payments price. Now that is a lot higher than some of the software you might see. However, the good thing about this is there's no upsells. So every single feature that this sales page talks about, that I'll talk about, they are completely free and included in that package. And there won't be any extra upsells afterwards that ask you to, say, pay another £200 for a limited or £50 for a extra um, commercial license. This is all included in one price. So let's start by looking at Human Talk. So here we are on the main screen of the Human Talk dashboard. This here is similar to most of Paul Potter's products. It starts with a welcome, a little bit of talk about the updates, and also the training webinars that they have. I've been to a couple of these. There's some really good training on there. And he does stick to his promise not to sell extra features or extra products on his webinars. And they're worth checking out. And if you head over to the top here where it says tutorials, all the webinars and all the tutorials will be on here. Really good information on here, which will help you when you are using Human Talk. And as we go further down, we have some new features and then the masterclasses, which have been really useful, especially this customer training masterclass which is the start of, I think, six webinars, which are going to go through all of the features and how to use it. And Paul Potter, for uh, whatever anyone thinks of his software, I think the ones I've used have been really good. Some of the people have said there's other ones that aren't quite so good. As a marketer, he is very good, and I'm sure he's got a lot of information that would be useful to anybody who wants to market products. But the main thing we want to look at on Human Talk is how it actually works. So I've done a couple of audios on here, which I do use on my website especially as I bought a Human Pal before. And on Human Pal, it's got a minute long uh, videos with a human AI presenter. And these are things that I've used for it. So I'll have a quick listen to this one here. Are you tired of spending countless hours creating content for your blog or website? Do you want to take your content creation to the next level? Look no further than Human Talk AI. This review explores the unique features of this AI writing and voice clone software. So it is a really good AI voice and it is very realistic sounding. If we head to the main audio, this is where we'll see all of the different voices that are available to you when you use Human Talk. Now there are over 850 and they have recently added about 150 multilingual AI, I've not used those ones yet. Um, those voices are on a beta test at the moment. And then if we go a bit further down, this is the main part that makes Human Talk a little bit different to the other platforms. So if we go into here, there are different options for the kind of voice. All the ones without this option on here are general voices. However, you've got options for chat, customer service, narration, and then down here, different emotions which is what they're talking about here so if we look at a shouting for example hello you can pick me as your spokesperson or if we look at cheerful hello you can pick me as your spokesperson for your next project my favorite one that i use usually is one of the narration voices hello you can pick me as your spokesperson for your next project i can convey your but depending on what you'd want to do, there are different ca use cases for all these voices. Say if you have a customer service hotline and you want to be able to have a voice that answers the phone when you first come through and goes through the options, this customer service one might be a good choice. As your spokesperson for your next project. 
So if we look at the US ones have a lot more of these. However, there are a lot of different languages. Now, the disappointing thing for me at the moment is the United Kingdom one doesn't really have much in the way of the emotion voices. They're all sort of general standard voices. Now, as we go through, I think there's two here, but there's very little in the way of options for emotion voices for UK. However, there are some very good voices still on that. Hello. You can pick me as your spokesperson for your next project. So when we're going through the Human Talk app, what you will find is that the options that are available to you are very similar to the options that are available on other AI software. However, one thing that these two creators are great at is the advertising and the marketing side of things, which is where they've marked this as a emotion voice rather than just different styles of speaking. But what's good about this is that it is unlimited. So it has over 850 voices, which are all from the main text-to-speech platforms. And if we go through and choose one here and we go through to the voice side of things, this is where you go to create the, the actual voice. Now this I think is a lot easier than the other software that I've used in the past as it seems to get the pronunciations right pretty much first time. It has some ready-made scripts up here which I don't know why you'd want to use that because if you use that you've got the same as everyone else. But down here you've got an option to select the language so when you put the language in it can translate it for you. But down here we'll write out a little script for the voice to use to this video about human talk. We then need to agree to the terms and conditions, which asks you not to use anything illegal. And then we go through to create the voice. Now this is really quick. And that's just loads up. It's a very, very quick voice here. So let's have a quick listen. Hello and welcome to this video about human talk. So that's very fast. If you want to slow it down, if you go back, you can add a couple of pauses in here. That will put a little pause in there if you put those commas in and it will slow the speaking down a little bit. Hello and welcome to this video about human talk. So a little bit unrealistic there, the pause before human talk, but that's how you can put a little pause in to make it sound a little bit, a little bit uh, shorter and a little bit more realistic if you are wanting to emphasize certain points. Now one here you can save that or you can download it very quickly by clicking that button. And then over here in my audios, you've got again, it's saved onto here. And then you can either edit it, download it from there, or play it from this screen here. So my thoughts on the text-to-speech side of things is that it is really good quality. It's better than a lot of the ones that I've used. I used to use Mic One Step, which is a really good text-to-speech software. However, because it's a monthly charge, the actual package that you pay a one-time fee for only has a certain number of characters available to you every single month. And also the pronunciations weren't great uh, and the realisms from the voices weren't as good as human talk seems to be. So I made the move over to here for that reason and I'm very happy with the decision on here. Then we move on to the text writer side of things. Now text writer, once again, just like the human talk, it has a splash page here, which has everything on. And then when you go on the top of the screen, you've got your projects over here, which has saved projects. One thing to remember is when we go through it, we're able to, you, you will need to go all the way through and click save to save it in here. Unlike the human talk side of things, which saves it even if you don't press save. Text writer, you have to press save, otherwise it won't actually save your content. You've got a content spinner, which I personally wouldn't use myself, but some people might want to use it. But over here, content from a prompt. And I'm going to go through now what is really uh, an excellent feature, probably the one that will make anybody who uses prompts in other platforms take a bit of notice of this so the main way it advertise is if you want to talk about something write the world cup for example click next and what it will quickly do is generate you an article now i believe this uses the ChatGPT api i believe originally it may have used curie because uh, the content wasn't quite as good as i was getting from other platforms but a couple of days after ChatGPT came, came out onto api this seemed to change a little bit and it seemed to also have uh, better content being created. So if we look on here, here is a quick article entirely about the World Cup. And that, to me, really good article and um, very useful. But if we go back here, underneath you see an option for advanced prompt mode. If you click that and click submit, what it's going to do for you 
it's going to make you a prompt that you can use in the text writer or you could take it to ChatGPT or any other AI writing software that allows you to put in a normal prompt and it will write content for you based on the prompt that it's written. So what's really good about this, pop this in here and let's have a look at it. So there, that is detailed analysis, explore the evolution, highlight key moments, discuss the social and economic impact. That has taken a keyword and outlined an entire post. That is, for me, when I got this software, I didn't think that the text writer side was going to be any use to me whatsoever. I already write good prompts for ChatGPT. I already have my own content writing platform that I've created for myself using the, uh, the API. I didn't think I'd need this, but that advanced prompt mode, it just makes things quicker. If I just want a quick prompt that's going to get, get a certain section written for me, this does it and it does it perfectly. So if we get this prompt through, it will start to write content based on that prompt. Now for me, one way that I have liked to use this, get the prompt, get it to write the content, get it to summarize it, uh, depending on how good the summary is, but hey, this I'll show you why in a second. And then take those sections, put them to ChatGPT, get it to then quickly talk a little bit more about the information that's in it and to split the content open to separate subheadings. Then take those subheadings and the content that is written into my own writer, which then will create, create me a full blog post, which is a bit more detailed. And to me, that has worked perfectly. This has replaced ChatGPT as the first stage of my AI content writing process. But if we look on here, what is written, I do that because I want articles of about 2,000, 3,000 words. But for this, if you just wanted a 600 word article, this is absolutely unbelievably good. It talks about a, a lot of great things. And it's really well organized as well, which is uh, which has gone from the prompt that it's, that it's been given. It's, it's written exactly to the prompt. It's, it's even part of the football mark, which is um, something that I'm surprised that an article would bring up in here. It's a very good piece of content there that, that I, I can't, if I was, if I had a website that was a football website, I would attempt to use that. But if we move forward, the next step is to summarize content. Now, for me, what I've used this for usually is to say, create a content, a content here in about 58 seconds. Then take this content over into the human talk, get that content created there, and then take this into human pal. And in human pal, that has an AI avatar, it already has 58 and 60 second limit, and get the human avatar to read this information out and to use that on my website. If you look on my website at richardback.co.uk, some of my articles on there, my blog posts on there, they do have a video summary at the top and this is partly how I do it depending on what comes over here because it seems to this doesn't I don't believe this part is done by AI I think it just kind of well at least not the ChatGPT API what it does is it seems to just condense a certain part and, and put it into one section for me it's a really good idea there however it's something that I would always use just because sometimes it doesn't pick the right parts of content out so over here we've got the full article over here so I'm going to copy that continue down here and you've got your translation now your translation over here you've got a lot of different options for translation I don't speak any other languages at least to any good extent so I don't know how good this is uh, my feeling is that it's not quite as good as other op options that are out there I don't believe this is good as ChatGPT is at translating I believe this uses something similar to what Google uses for translating it's real just machine translation um, but if you speak Danish, uh, write in the comments, let me know, is this a good translation of what we've been looking at? So then if you save it here, it will save it to the projects. Now, the one thing I would say that's the downside of text right there is that it only saves what you've got on the last page. So if you have gone through, created your full article, you haven't copied it, you've summarized it, you translated it, and then you saved it, all you have saved is the translation. You don't have the original content saved on there. Now your content spinner over here, this is something that I personally wouldn't use and I'll show you why here. So if you spin the content, it's going to take a little bit of time, but what that's going to do is take what I, what's written on the left hand side and reword it so it's an original content on the right hand side. This really is something that you'd only really want to use if you wanted to 
repurposing the content to put onto other sites, which looks original, so it doesn't affect, so it kind of gets around Google's duplicate content policies. Really, when I look over here, I will say this does seem better than it did on day one, so I'm wondering if it has also changed from a, from a basic spinner to a spinner using an AI software, I'm not 100% sure, maybe it has. But all it's doing, if you go through, it, all it is doing here is it's just switching up the content a little bit. So if we go right down to the bottom, it's just switching the content, taking out the conclusion and just writing it in a slightly different way. It's not something I would use, but it might be something that you have an, a, a use for. Once again, you can then summarize and translate that and then save it. Text writer for me is a surprise. I didn't think I would want to use it, but it is this tool here, this advanced prompt mode. This is what has drawn me to use it because like I said, if you put in here anything that you want to write about, and if clearly the, the more complex you put in there, the better, it then turns it into a really high quality advanced prompt there, which is, is something you can use in any different AI software you want to use as long as it takes to some kind of prompt you could take this and put this into the um that use this as a magic command in simwriter you could use it as part of your prompt in author intelligence you could take it in chat gpt and use it as your prompt in there that is going to give you something that is you just can't get anywhere anywhere else as as well as this does it it is a really great feature that I think is worth it alongside the text-to-speech options as well that you've got. This is going to get your content writing started on the right foot without too much effort from your side. Now, when it comes to the price, like I said, the price is higher than a lot of one-time deals. I still think that it's good value because you don't have to pay monthly for these features and it also is completely unlimited and it, there's no upsells. So many of the packages that you will see out there that give you a price plan of say $59 or $60 or even less sometimes will have a lot of features cut off at the front end so that when you go through to the back end they want to charge you with four, five, six upsells. This here, it's one price and that price is all you'll ever pay for every single feature that I've gone through in this tutorial. So I do have a link in the description to buy this product and I have bought this myself and I am only reviewing it because I am impressed with the software. I also have Human Pal. I have put a link in the description if you have an interest in it. I've not reviewed that product because while it is a great product, it isn't one that really fits the sort of things that I talk about, but it is something that I use in conjunction with this to be able to have little spokesperson videos at the top of my blog posts for very little extra work. So if that is something that is useful for you, using this in conjunction with Human Pal is a really good option. I will add a very short video after afterwards, probably tomorrow, which uses Human Pal to take some content that I've written about on my website and take it to a little summary. And I'll put that onto YouTube so you can have a quick watch of it tomorrow. If you are considering buying this based on the review, please click my link. That discount that's on there will be applied to your account. It just helps to support the channel and helps to support the work that I like to do, which is writing about these sort of tools and talking about them here on YouTube. Also, if you have liked these videos that I have on this channel, please like and subscribe. I'll be back to doing some tutorials on how to write prompts next week. But for now, I hope you all have a great weekend and a great week, and I'll see you again next Saturday.